What's good everyone, my name is Hims, and in today's video I'm going to be building a 1.20 cherry blossom starter house. For this house I did find a very beautiful location, it's right next to a village which is perfect for starting out. And check this out, the pathway even goes into the cherry blossom forest which I thought was a really cool detail. There's even a bunch of cows here so it's perfect for starting out. But, wait a minute, you're not a cow, what do you have? What are you trying to do, blend in? You trying to be a spy? The first step is to place a stripped oak log and that is gonna be the corner of your house. You're gonna to wanna to go three out from that, place another log, another three out, place another log, another three out, and place another log. Go ahead and turn 90 degrees and we're gonna go three out from that and place another log and repeat that process. Go ahead and turn 90 degrees, place two more logs and that is going to be it. Off of this last log, we're gonna start with the tower. Go ahead and place a stone block and then three polished andesite, the diagonal from each other. Next, we're gonna place a polished andesite stair and then another polished andesite stair in front of that facing into it. This is gonna act as a window. Now off of that polished andesite stair, we're gonna do three more blocks of polished andesite diagonally. And then we're gonna continue with the stair pattern making another window. Go ahead and place three more diagonal polished andesite and then a stone on the side of the last polished andesite. That's gonna be the first layer of your tower. Go ahead and place in the final oak log. And then we're gonna go on the inside of the oak logs as you see right here and just fill it in leaving a gap for the doorway up front. And once you're done with that, your finished foundation should look exactly like this. I'm gonna pause here so you guys can kind of catch up. After that, we're gonna raise up the stripped oak logs by another three blocks. Go ahead and do that all around the house and we will be raising these up more in the future, but for now, go ahead and just do this. After that, place a horizontal beam connecting the tops of every single pillar of stripped oak logs just as you see right here. After that, we're gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of the bottom with stone, leaving gaps for the windows that we're gonna have. For the second layer, we're just gonna fill in every single block with stone, except for on top of the stairs. Now the third layer is going to be just like the bottom layer, right? We have a stone, a three diagonal polished andesite, but this time with the andesite stairs, we're going to do them upside down and that will complete the look of the window that we're going for. Go ahead and continue that process all the way around until you meet the other side and place a stone block. Now this next layer is going to be a pure stone, so we're just going to go ahead and go through and fill it in. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do another layer of the andesite with the stairs on the bottom, come through and do another layer with just stone and basically repeat the window process that we just did on the bottom layer. And with that layer complete, we will be moving on to the next portion of the house, which is a little bit of the detail. We're gonna take some oak stairs and place them upside down on each of the beams right next to the windows, just as you see here, and that's just gonna give it a little archway, make it look a little more detailed. And I'm also gonna go ahead and just plop in some fences where the windows should be, because it gives it more of like a old timey medieval kind of vibe. You can put glass panes here if you'd like. On top of each pillar, we're gonna go ahead and place some upside down oak stairs, and on the corner bits, we're gonna place two, just like you see me doing here. Now on top of those upside down stairs, we are going to place some more stripped oak logs and we're gonna do a pillar of four. So go ahead and place four stripped oak logs in a pillar design on every single upside down stair. After that, we're gonna come through with some white wool and we're gonna fill in the walls just like we did in the bottom, leaving a space open for the windows. And go ahead and just fill this in all the way around the house. After we place in the wall, we are going to place another cross beam on top of the wool wall running all the way across the house, just as you see me doing here. After that, we will take some oak slabs and place them on the outer side of that cross beam on the lower level of the cross beam, right? Just to add a little bit of depth and dimension. 
After that, we're gonna go ahead and raise the pillars each by one. And then place a cross beam on the outside this time, right above the oak slab. And you guys could see right here, it just gives it a little bit more detail. Go ahead and do that all the way around. Now that we have the main structure of the walls, we're gonna come back to the tower and place a row of stone. And then we are going to place three diagonal andesite with these stairs, just like we did for the windows. We're gonna go ahead and place stone, leaving these stairs open for the window. And then we will do our last layer of these big windows that you see right here. Now on top of that layer, we will do one more layer of stone. And on top of that layer of stone, we will do one final layer with a very mini window at the top. Now go ahead and place your polish andesite stairs upside down like you see me doing here. As you can see, we have three large windows with one small window at the top. Next, we're going to start with the roof, and this is where the cherry wood comes in. So go ahead and just place full cherry wood blocks on the outer side of the cross beam, and this roof is going to be all full blocks. The next layer diagonal to that, we're going to go up two with the cherry wood. And then on the next layer, we will go one, and this is going to give the roof a little interesting curve. On the next layer, we are going to go two up, just as you see me doing here. And for the next layer, which is the peak of the roof, we will finish it off with two. Go ahead and repeat that process on the other side. And as you can see right here, it does give it that kind of medieval fantasy looking roof. And on this side, we are going to do a bit of a different design, but we're going to pull this bottom block all the way out. And that's going to be the start of this roof. Now on the second portion, we are just going to go up one. So bring out one all the way to the end. And then on the third layer, we will bring it up two, as you see me doing right here. On the next layer, we will do one. And then on the next one, we will do one again. Go ahead and do one more all the way up until you hit the peak of the roof. And then we're gonna go ahead and just repeat that process on the other side. Now for the roof on the tower, it's going to be a little more complicated. I'm going to go ahead and fill in another layer of stone just so we have something to build off of. After that, get your cherry wood and place a ring around that layer of stone we just placed. After that, we're going to do another layer of cherry wood. For the next layer, we're going to come up on this corner piece and just bring it along as you see me doing right here. And we're basically just going to make a square. After that, we're going to place four more cherry wood blocks on top of that square, kind of make it another square just without the corners. Oh, go ahead and fill in that block. On top of that, we're going to go ahead and just make another square pattern. After that, we will place four cherry wood blocks on top of each other, just like you see me doing right here. And then in the middle, we will fill it up with eight more cherry wood blocks. And then on top, we are going to add a little fence post just for a little extra detail and to make the roof curve up a bit more. After that, your roof should be looking a little something like this. Now we want to bring up these oak wood beams all the way up to the roof. And then we're going to go ahead and fill in the third layer walls with oak wood using a stair on the bottom of the window seal where the window is going to be. Go ahead and fill this layer all the way up to the roof. Then I like to put some fences on the outer side of this ledge and up on the roof just to give it a little bit more detail. And your house is almost finished. 
do this side just like how you did the front go ahead and raise up all these pillars all the way up to the roof and then on the inside we will fill it in with oak wood using an oak wood stair where the window is going to be and then of course the fence posts at the end just to give it a little bit more detail Next, we're gonna go ahead and fill it in all the windows in the second and the third layer with glass panes. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the window seals. We're gonna put two oak fences on either side of the window. Then on top of those fence posts, we're gonna put two trap doors as well on the bottom of those fence posts, and then an oak slab in the middle of the gap. And there are many different ways you can do a window seal, but I like this one. It just gives it a little bit more depth, a little bit more detail. And we're gonna do this on this window as well. Now on this third portion, we're actually not gonna do a window seal. We are going to mix it up a little bit so your eyes have something different to look at. We're basically gonna put in a diagonal beam and these are very popular in old medieval style buildings or older Tudor style buildings. And when you're finished with that, it just gives your eyes a little something different to look at, which I really think is a cool detail. Just so every single wall doesn't have a window on it. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same to the other side. Go ahead and make your window seals. And put in a diagonal beam wherever you think it would fit. Go ahead and place a door down and your house is pretty much finished. Now you can stop right here and this is a perfect starter house. You can make it in your first few days of playing Minecraft if you gather up all the resources. But now we're gonna get into the advanced version of this house, which honestly is just getting a couple more resources and texturing up the walls. So we're gonna be using birch logs, diorite, and polished diorite. What you need to do is just go around to every single portion of the wall and just place these randomly wherever you think they would fit. You kind of have to do this for a while to get the feeling of it, but I'm sure you can do it very easily. And just like how we did on the top, we are going to do it on the bottom with some mossy cobblestone and some regular cobblestone. And this is just going to make the building look like it was worn a little bit, like it's been here for a while, which I really like that style. And we're just going to use some regular andesite and pepper that throughout the stone just to break up the stone texture a little bit. Next, we're going to move on to the advanced style roof. So on the bottom rim of the roof, we are going to replace that with pink concrete. And we're going to go ahead and do that a couple layers up. Next, we are going to add in some stripped cherry logs, and these are a little bit darker than the plank, so it makes a really good transition in my opinion. And we're going to go ahead and do that three layers up. We're going to repeat that on the other side. And then we are going to connect it to this other part of the roof that is facing the opposite way. So place two lines of pink concrete and we're going to go three lines of the cherry stripped log. And for the tower, we're going to place the bottom ring with pink concrete, just like we did the other roofs. And then we will place some rows of the stripped cherry log. You guys could do this in whatever order you would like. You could even do the pink concrete on top and the cherry wood planks on the bottom. That would work as well. And as you guys can see right here, I actually changed my mind and I wanted two rows of pink concrete. So remember, you can always go back and play with your build as much as you like. You could touch it up however you want. Another detail I want to show you is go ahead and place every other pink concrete block with a stripped cherry log and it'll kind of give it just a little bit more texture like it's blending in a little bit better just so the gradient is at a flat line. And as you guys can see, it makes a huge difference. So we're going to go ahead and do that all the way around. And if you want to, you can go ahead and place the cherry fence on top of this roof as well. I wanted to save this for the end because I know not everyone likes the roofs with fence posts on top, but I personally do. I think it looks pretty neat. And then for this tower, we're going to go ahead and texture up the tower just like how we did the bottom of the house, right? Placing in some mossy cobblestone with some regular cobblestone and some andesite. 
And on the tower, I kind of wanted it to look like there was a vine creeping up the side of it, right? So always keep in mind small details like that, which can really tell a story in a Minecraft build. You could go ahead around the whole tower and texture it up just like this if you'd like. And that is going to complete this cherry wood starter house. We did a starter house portion and then we did more of an advanced tutorial with some texturing and stuff like that. So let me know how you guys like that kind of video. Just because I know not every starting out player will have pink concrete, but it really does add to this build. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Go ahead and leave a like so YouTube pushes this video to other people and it could help other people as well. And if you watched all the way to the end, you will have this spoiler for my survival world. We're going to be building a whole village in this sort of style in my survival world very soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that as well. But until next video, everyone, I'm out. I'll talk to you later.